on being successful in a matrix organization is taking the lead, not waiting for someone to make a decision, but finding out who does, who does need to make the decision in certain areas. And then I learned that some of these insecurities that I personally feel about, am I an imposter? Am I good enough? Do I need to do everything perfectly to get the next promotion? Making sure that we have diverse representation in meetings, making sure that the meeting isn't too large, because honestly, if you have too many people in a meeting, you're gonna hear from the same two to three people. It was still a pretty new company and there were all these new problems and just being curious and trying things out is what helped me stand out. Good morning. So today I have Rekha with us, who is a boss woman who actively calls out gender bias and inequality. She's always seen supporting and encouraging other women to succeed, which makes her very special. She's a change agent collaborator who has developed scalable agile strategy operation frameworks for many employees. Let's welcome Raquel on 10 Minutes of Hiring Wisdom, where she will tell us what it's like to work with some of the fastest top growing companies, what she's learned along the way while being a woman in a company, companies that might be dominated mostly by men. Hi, Raquel. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. So, Raquel, first question. You've always been very, you've placed a lot of emphasis in your career regarding creating successful matrix. So, how do you create meaningful and measurable successful matrix and what does that mean for a company? Yeah, so the matrix that I pay attention to is the way different organizations are connected in a company. And if you think about the way our industries are that our businesses serve, everything is matrix now. Everything's connected and virtual. I work in cloud commerce throughout the course of my career and everything is connected. And so if you think about connection and matrix being kind of the same, it's about how do you find a common shared goal and how do you work together by not trying to do all the same thing, but find how all the pieces kind of work together. So you're forming an engine, if you will. And so it's a combination of knowing your business, asking a lot of questions to understand that, knowing your customers and knowing the people that are involved. And so typically what works really well is just maintaining those relationships, finding a swift way to stay connected across teams and remain curious. So uh, the, the biggest thing that I've learned on being successful in a matrix organization is taking the lead, not waiting for someone to make a decision, but finding out who does, who does need to make the decision in certain areas and finding out ways to simplify if there are more people in a matrix organization that are working to simplify, they will find each other and they will do it. And almost always this is the case. There's probably, I'd say with every matrix organization that I've worked with, I'd say on average, there's about 10% of the people that really are passionate about simplifying. And I, I'm in a space where I'm doing that right now, at my current place of work, where we're trying to simplify how we can simply create a really thriving hybrid work environment. We don't go into the office much anymore and we're finding ways on how we can make things a little bit more interesting and find stronger bonds working together professionally. I love that. I think um, maybe it definitely gives a clear idea regarding where you are on the roadmap, how far you have to go, how far you've come along, because at the end of the day, you want to measure your progress and what you've learned along the way and learn from other people and their learnings as well. So thank you so much for sharing that, Raquel. Raquel, my next question for you would be is, you're big on diversity, you're big on women inclusion, and you were even a lead in a conference at eBay, where Women in Technology. So where does inspiration come from? I mean, of course you're a woman, but do you have any personal story that you could share regarding why you have so much passion for that? You know, the very first women diversity meetings I went to, I didn't even know this was a problem, that women were different or seen differently in the workforce. And so I it, call it naive or whatever, but I just felt like I was being myself. And then I learned that some of these insecurities that I personally feel about, am I an imposter? 
Am I good enough? Do I need to do everything perfectly to get the next promotion? Those are all things that do correlate to people who are outside of the norm. If you don't look like your leadership team, not just a woman, but if you simply just don't look like your leadership team, you tend to run into those issues. And so this was true uh, with women and that still is a trend. And I just went to a women's conference last week and we still struggle with that as, uh, as women. And so that just really put a passion in me wanting to solve this for myself and for other people that all we need is that confidence in our own selves and who we are. And it's not about what we look like, how we sound, our preferences, but it's just reminding us that being individual is amazing. And that's what we want for our businesses to be successful. Okay. No, I think um, that's a very beautiful story. And I think it starts at root level. You identify a problem. You decided you want to be a part of solving that problem. And you are making a difference in so many women's lives just by acknowledging a problem like that exists and working with other women who are on a mission to make sure that women have a seat on the table. So thank you for sharing that, Raquel. I think my next question for you would be, is you mentioned that um, women have this habit of self-doubting themselves. Are they good enough? This um, this this notion that, okay, they might not be fitting well. So how can companies create a culture or an environment where women can come, where women can feel comfortable to grow in and make mistakes in as well? Well, definitely hire people that look like them. <laughs> this is a really important thing. That's the first step uh, because then you feel comfortable. You feel like you can reach out to someone. Um, and also making programs visible, being really supportive of it, I, I think in most organizations, there are programs that are out there. And so it's just being supportive of taking that extra time so that people can pave that into their own development plans and finding ways to do that. And I'd say the other thing just on the day-to-day -day work as well is where the problems lie that I've seen the most. So leaders and anyone in any kind of meeting if you become an advocate for being inclusive of thought, making sure that we have diverse representation in meetings, making sure that the meeting isn't too large, because honestly, if you have too many people in a meeting, you're going to hear from the same two to three people. And we're going to try to do this consensus driven kind of conversation, but it's just too big of a crowd. And so right sizing who goes into a meeting and having good representation would probably be something that we could do a lot more of. Okay. No, I think those are good strategies. Um, and having women, having people who look like them is specifically important. Um, never thought about it and it seems like common sense. But then again, a lot of companies don't do that. So thank you for sharing that, Raquel. Last question, Raquel. You worked with some of the top companies such as eBay, currently working with Oracle, even Adobe. Can you tell us what it was like for you to work in these companies, what you learned along the way and how you managed to get in, get your foot into the door with such big companies? Because I've heard the process is very rigorous from your experience. It can be difficult. And my first opportunity was at eBay and I actually became a temp. And my opportunity to turn my temp job into a career at eBay was remaining curious. And this was in 2000, yes, I joined in 2005. So it was still a pretty new company. And there were all these new problems. And just being curious and trying things out is what helped me stand out. And working on diversity was actually a really big support at eBay. We had really, really strong leadership that were really passionate about diversity. And so I was in the right place and I had so many growth opportunities. And so because they invested in their people so much, I took advantage of all of them and I was able to provide a lot of value there as well. And so just really being bold on growing and turning what you're learning into something that provides value to the company is really good. I've always been hyper curious about what I'm doing and how it impacts what the overall goal is for the company. So being laser focused on providing what you have to offer that adds value to the organization is really important. 
I'm in a really big company now. Oracle is huge and it can be really overwhelming at times. However, I've learned different things that I've picked up in the different companies that I, these ideas don't really exist yet at Oracle. And so integrating those ideas is a great way to bring that in and also learning from those that have come from different backgrounds that I haven't worked with. So I, I do stand out because I'm always making a spider web of ideas, if you will, with people. I think you can never be wrong by being too creative, by being yeah. too curious, because curiosity creates the drive and the drive to want to learn more and more things. And that causes people to take initiative, to learn from other people, to reach out to other people, to have their answer, uh, questions answered. And that's a very important characteristic. Even a research came out recently where curiosity was one of the top skills that employers look for when they're searching for new candidates when it comes to soft skills. So thank you so much for sharing that, Raquel. But other than that, Raquel, our time is up. It was a pleasure learning about you, the work that you've done when it comes for women empowerment, how you start worked with some of the biggest companies and vouched for women allowed them to be themselves and created a safe space for them to come learn and grow and make mistakes thank you so much thank you so much Thanks.